Welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down one of our bigger Unicorn Factory features, which is our portfolio showcase. So let's get into it. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Connor. I make a whole bunch of videos on how to build online marketplaces using no-code tools like Webflow, Airtable, and Zapier. So today I am going to be breaking down one of the bigger features that I have on the Unicorn Factory, which is our portfolio showcase. The portfolio showcase was probably the first feature that I built and launched after starting the Unicorn Factory. And the main reason why that feature took priority was because it was pretty clear early on that it was important to the clients that use the Unicorn Factory to see what type of work freelance we're doing. Even today, freelancers who have case studies on their profile convert three times more clients than freelancers who don't. So if you're thinking about setting up a service-based marketplace, adding portfolios, case studies, whatever it is you want to call them, is incredibly important because it adds a whole lot of credibility to your service providers. So I'm going to kick things off by showing you how it all works, what the case studies look like inside of profiles, what they look like inside of the showcase, and then I am going to take you behind the scenes, show you how it's all set up inside of Airtable and Webflow, and after that I'm going to show you how I've set up the workflows inside of Zapier and why I also need to use Parabola to make sure that the galleries work. But first, the most important thing of all, please be sure to hit the like button on this video, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and please let me know in the comments down below what it is that you're working on and what it is that you need help with so I know what to make the next video about. But without further ado, let's just jump into the Unicorn Factory and check out the showcase. So here is the Unicorn Factory showcase. As you can see, it's a whole bunch of projects that are created by different freelancers on our website. If we go and check out the different profile pages of the freelancers, you can also see all the case studies listed in there as well. And when we jump into the case study page, you can see what the setup of it is. We've got a description of the project. We have an image gallery where users can upload multiple images. We have a link to all these skills and services that were used in the creation of this particular project. And of course, it is linked back to the freelancer that does the work in case they wanna reach out to that freelancer to hire them. So the way that a freelancer can add a case study to their profile is pretty straight forward all they need to do is jump into the freelancer dashboard and click on the add a case study button as you would expect the case study forms are set up inside of Airtable in case you haven't seen any of my previous videos the main reason why I use Airtable for my forms is because I can do things like link it to different tables I can upload multiple images also add rich text to the description which makes the overall experience of creating a case study page a lot easier so if you've seen any of my previous videos then this workflow will seem very familiar with the freelancer onboarding process. There are, however, subtle differences in the relationship between the portfolio items and the freelancer profiles inside of Webflow. So let's dive into it and check out how it's set up inside of the CMS. Cool, so let's have a look at how the case study collection is set up inside of Webflow. We can see here all the different fields that are listed. We can see that we have a multi-reference field which relates to the skills table, so that is what I need in order to display all the different skill tags inside of the case study. Then we also have a reference to the portfolio. So with this field, I determine who the freelancer is who owns this case study. So let's go and check out the Unicorn Factory case study. So you can see here, I've got my project hero. That is the big image that will be displayed on the case study page. I have my images that pop up when I click on them. Then I have the description of my project and you can see here, this is in HTML and it was initially converted from the Airtable markdown. Then I have a project link. Here are the services that are linked to this particular case study. And here is the freelancer that is linked to the case study. And then I also pull in the Google Analytics page use using Parabola. That's something that I'll show you later on. So one thing I see people trying to do when adding case studies or showcases to their website is that they actually create the case study collection and then try to use a multi-reference list to link it to that particular profile. So what I mean by that is inside of the profiles collection, we have skills, which links to multiple skills what people try to do is they try to do the same for case studies but I recommend against that there's a much better way of doing it, and I'll show you exactly how that is set up inside of the Webflow profile template page so just to be clear I did attempt to do this with the multi reference step inside of the profile collection but I was starting to have issues with certain case studies not displaying so after experimenting doing it the other way around where I would just send all the case studies to the case study collection and then linking it to the freelancer I actually came up with 
of a system where I could store only display the case studies relevant to that particular freelancer. And this is how I did it. So you just add the case study collection list inside of your profile and then under the element settings tab, all you need to do is apply a filter where the freelancer is the current profile. In short, in this collection right here, it displays all of the case studies, but then it filters it out only by the case studies that apply to this particular profile. So let's quickly have a quick look inside of Airtable so we can have a look at that setup. Again, if you've seen any of my previous tutorials, you'll be familiar with this type of setup, but it has all the fields, images, and everything that you need populated. Again, here there is a separate field for the gallery images. So the ones that have multiple images get to add their images in there. And all of these fields are populated when a freelancer fills out the form. And now let's check out the workflow that I've got set up, which sends the approved case studies from Airtable to Webflow. So the first step is it gets moved into the approved view inside of Airtable. From there, what happens is we convert the Airtable markdown into HTML. I know a few of you have asked how that works. Again, all you need to do is just choose app, formatter by Zapier, action event is text. And then in the setup action, all you need to do is transform string markdown because markdown is what we're converting and then go convert text into HTML. And then what you wanna do is you just wanna drop the project description field that you would have gotten in step one in here and that will then convert the Airtable markdown into HTML. Next, we create a live item in Webflow, which is very similar to the freelancer onboarding process. It just sends all of the information from Airtable to Webflow. After that is done, we need to add those skill tags and you can't do that directly in the create live item step inside of Zapier. So what we need to do is write some custom code where we send the skills tags to Webflow. Next, I update the Airtable record for that case study with the Webflow item ID and the slug and I also update the status from approved to live. In step number six, what I do is I actually update the freelancer profile item. So if a freelancer does not have a case study added to their profile, then I don't want it to just show no items shown. What I wanna do is I wanna hide this entire section. And the way that I do it is by adding a switch or a button inside of the profiles collection where if a freelancer has a case study listed in their profile it is on otherwise it is off then I use conditional logic to say if this profile has a case study turn this field on otherwise keep it off that way if a freelancer does not have a case study attached to their profile that section won't appear at all so that is what I do in this step here I basically change it from false to true if someone's adding their second third or fourth portfolio the step still repeats itself but it just doesn't change from false to true, it just changes from true to true. And then I also send the freelancers an email notifying them that their project is live with a link to the project so that they can go and review it. You can dynamically populate the link that you send them by using the slug that you created in step three. So you may have noticed that I didn't have a step inside of Zapier where I sent the gallery image that was stored inside of Airtable to Webflow through either the create live item feature or the custom code. That is one of those things that for some reason hasn't worked yet, but there is a workaround and the workaround that I use for that is Parabola. And so here we are inside of Parabola with my case study sync. So I use the case study sync to make sure that all the case studies are in sync with what I have in Airtable. I also use it to update the page views that individual case studies are getting in case I wanna move trending case studies higher up the list. But I won't go into too much detail about this particular step. If you want to find out more about how I use Parabola, then I definitely recommend checking out my how to build an analytics dashboard video that is on my channel. It goes over this exact flow for the freelancers and it explains it in a lot more detail. The main reason why I want to show you this sync now is because at the moment you can't really use Zapier to send gallery images from Airtable to Webflow. There is however a way to get it from Airtable to Webflow and that is using the Webflow CMS export step inside of Parabola. So all you need to do is you need to assign the field for multi-images inside of Webflow to the corresponding field inside of Airtable, which in my case is called Gallery. As previously mentioned, I also export the Google Analytics page views that updates every single time I run this flow. So as soon as I run this flow, all the images will be up to date. And especially if I make a change inside of Airtable, for example, to update a case study, I can then automatically apply those changes just by running this flow inside of Parabola. And that's it, my friends. Those are all my secrets to creating a case study portfolio showcase inside of Webflow. And if you now want to go ahead and build your own freelancing marketplace in 
New Zealand, you have all the tools, all the tutorials available to you, and I can't wait to compete with you. So before we all leave today, I want to finish off with a plug for my MVMP, which is short for Minimum Viable Marketplace program that I'm about to launch in January. And basically what it is, is I will build you the MVP of your marketplace and then coach you in one-on-one -on -one sessions on how you can use all the different tools that I've used. Kind of will be similar to these tutorials, but more specific to your use case. And I will also share some marketing tips, business tips, all those fun little things. So if that is something that you're interested in, if you're serious about getting something up in 2021, then please schedule a call with me. I'll take you through the entire process of getting something up and running, getting it to the point where you can monetize it. And it would be fantastic to hear from you. Other than that, I think I will probably publish one more video before the end of the year. If not, let's get out of this year and move on to 2021. But thank you so much for your support and I look forward to seeing you back 